seemed like such a good idea. I mean, I knew it meant 20 some odd hours straight driving through the rest of that day and the ensuing night, but I wanted her to see it. And I wanted to be there when she saw it. I wanted to be there when she stepped out of the van and saw it spread out before her in the first glimmering light of a dawn. The Grand Canyon. I, I wanted to see that look of awe in her eyes. The, the amazement, the, the sheer bloody majesty of it. I, I mean, I've been there a dozen times over the years, more. It, it, it never loses its power. I suppose I wanted her to put humanity, life, into some kind of perspective. Next to this great work of nature, human problems seem small. Mm, even makes my thousands of years of memories seem light. Of course, when I'd played out the trip in my head, I didn't include the rainstorm that hit us when we crossed the Rockies, or the flat that almost had us off the road and into a ditch just outside Flagstaff. I also, uh, I didn't include the bit where I slipped while I was trying to push the van out of the mud we'd become mired in, and fell down a bank into a strategically placed bramble bush. You know, the, the cuts and the bruises, they healed within minutes, but my clothes and my disposition were sadly beyond resuscitation. Oh. Alexa said it didn't matter. She tried to make a joke of it, but it did matter. This was the first day of our... our first and only trip. And here she was, woken out of her much-needed sleep by the, the cold and the wet and and by a guy who couldn't even manage a simple tire change. It just made me so mad. By the time I finally accepted that we wouldn't make it to the canyon for dawn and we should check into a hotel, I couldn't face the... Good evening, sir. How are we, sir? Ooh, had a bit of a rough trip, have we, sir? So I left Alexa to make the arrangements. She came back with two keys. Another little detail which my fantasy hadn't included. I couldn't say I blamed her. I didn't feel much like spending the night with me either. I wiped the mud out of my eyes and reached for the shower knobs. And then, summoning a dozen dead languages, I cursed fluently for a full minute without pausing for breath. Our quaint hotel, apparently designed for honeymoon couples, had foregone installing a shower in favor of a giant whirlpool tub. I stood there, shivering in the cold tiled bathroom while the tub filled. <sighs> it seemed like a geological age before it was deep enough, and I lowered myself gingerly into the steaming water, watching implacably as it instantly turned brown. I ducked my head under and tried to scrub some of the dirt out of my hair, but I only succeeded in sending more cascades of dirty water into my eyes. Oh. I sat with my eyes closed for a long moment, contemplating what a sissy I'd become over the years. I'm terribly accustomed to cleanliness. And then I had the sensation that I was not alone. Alexa was standing in the doorway, angelically wrapped in one of those white monogrammed bathrobes they have at all the best hotels. My room has a shower, she said by way of explanation. Maybe I should use it, I replied. Okay, I know it's not exactly Cary Grant, but it's hard when you look like Uriah Heep. Maybe you should try clean water, she said. Crouching down, she reached past me and pulled the plug under the drain. I sat motionless as the water slowly ebbed away. She held my gaze, never once looking away. A tiny smile playing on the corner of her lips. 
She was enjoying this, damn her. Bless her. When the tub was empty, she replaced the plug and turned the taps back on. She sat on the corner of the bath as it filled. Turn around, she said. So I did as I was told, drawing my knees up towards my chest. She nudged me forward with the knee and scooped up a handful of water to splash over me. And I let myself relax as the hot water rose around me. I could feel her fingers brushing against my scalp, against the tops of my ears as she went through my hair, strand by strand. I felt her hands drop to my shoulders and pause almost imperceptibly before moving on. She shifted position and reached past me for the soap, and when her hands returned, they were cool and slick with lava. She made her way over my shoulders and down my chest, and the last of the mud disappeared as she repeatedly cupped clean water over my body and smoothed away the remnants of soap. I could feel her breath warm against my ears as she leaned forward, and she worked down my arm from shoulder to elbow to wrist. And she lifted my hand and cleaned between each finger. And I closed my eyes, felt my breath catch at the touch of her hands against the sensitive webbing. And then she slowly traced a circle on the inside of my wrist, and my eyes flew open as the moment was shattered into a thousand pieces. And I thought you were just some geeky travel writer with his college van, she said, lifting my arm out to have a better look. I didn't figure you for the kind of guy with a checkered pass that included a tattoo. You have no idea, I said. What else was there to say? Where could I possibly start? I tried to look at the tattoo and see it the way she did, as a sign of a troubled youth. The inside of the wrist is jammed with nerves and veins and is one of the most dangerous places to be tattooed, hence the Watcher ritual. And hence, my involuntary shudder as she raised my wrist towards her mouth and I anticipated the coming kiss. But no kiss came. Instead, she blew gently on the exposed skin and then ran her tongue around the tattoo. And I shuddered once more and turned in the bath and scooped her up in my arms and pulled her in on top of me. Her robe turned instantly to sponge, and I held her and kissed her. I felt her breath go short and pulled back a fraction, looked into her eyes. And there it was. That look of wonder and awe that I'd wanted so much to see. Here in this tub, in this hotel room, was a work of nature older than either of us. Perhaps this first day wasn't ruined after all. <laughs>